I think that at this moment I can without any doubt say that this is the craziest thing I've ever done. I can't believe we're really doing this. If you're asking what the f am I doing in the middle of the Cameroonian rainforest at night, we need to go back six months. Half a year ago, while planning a trip to Central Africa, I was looking for something extraordinary to experience in Cameroon. Something extreme, unique, bizarre, rare, crazy, and so I tried to find such a special thing. I searched the web for weeks, but I only came across the same touristy places. National parks, nature reserves, safaris, museums, cathedrals, buildings... And then I found it. The biggest frog in the world. Also known as the Goliath frog, a creature so rare that it lives only in almost inaccessible alpine streams in a small area of southwest Cameroon and Equatorial Guinea. There are only a few pictures of this gigantic frog on the internet and finding a video of it is almost impossible. Apart from a bizarre American show from 1993, I found only one video of the Goliath frog. A documentary about Cameroonian frogs shot in 2016 by a group of zoologists. A short part of the documentary is devoted to the Goliath frog. We are on the quest to find the truly gigantic frogs. We are lucky to see several individuals with different size and age. But how can I, a non-zoologist, find this frog? Where exactly should I go? When? Who should I talk to? Will they even let me search for it? Too many questions that were not answered in the short part of the documentary. However, one sentence changed everything. The tissue samples are stored in alcohol, so they can endure the long journey back to the Czech Republic. Czech Republic. Czech Republic. Czech Republic. Czech Republic. I immediately started looking for more information about these zoologists. The man who was in charge of the Goliath frog research was named Maciej Dolinaj. Maciej Dolinaj became my absolute priority. He was the only person that could get me to the frog. I found him on Facebook and... One mutual friend. Lukasz Pich is my girlfriend's cousin. We have to call Lucas. And besides that, he's also Maciej Dolinaj's best friend. It wasn't hard to meet Maciej that same week and get all the desired information about the Goliath frog. What an insane coincidence! Maciej and his wife Zuzana were looking for Goliath frogs in the alpine rivers of Cameroon, first unsuccessfully near the town of Lolodorf and then successfully near the city of Nkongsamba. They found a larger frog after a few days in a local market. They warned me that the frog is so rare that I would be glad to spot it cooked in a restaurant. It was worth the crazy attempt though. So our goal was in Kongsamba, but after our arrival to Cameroon, riots broke out there and we were left with only one option. The oddly sounding town of Lolodorf, where Dolinais didn't find the frog. Our journey to Lolodorf begins in the seaside town of Kribi. So we're going to Lolodorf. So we're going by 4x4, which is a uh, which is great news because uh, the road would be very very bad. There's a lot of mud, a lot of sand. They also told us we should change our boots uh, because there's a there's a big chance that we would be getting the car out of the sand, but that may not happen because we have 4x4. I think we're ready to go. Guess how many people got into the five-seat car? 
19. Three in the front, four in the back, and 12 in the trunk. But that still wasn't the worst part of the whole situation. According to Google Maps, the 109 km journey from Kribi to Lolodorf would take 1 hour and 54 minutes. According to the locals, the road was in bad condition and the journey would take around 4 hours. The reality was completely different. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the road we're taking. It's unpaved. We've been going for about an hour right now. It's extremely slow. The driver told us to get out of the car and uh, walk for a few meters, maybe kilometers, I don't know. And uh, he's gonna see what he can do. We're in a forest right now. I'm really curious how this can be solved because we're only in about one tenth of the journey. So if this happens 10 more times, we're gonna arrive the next day. Shit, there's a snake. Where the serpent? Oh, so that was a centipede. Ooh. Teresa got really scared though, and uh, now we can see why. This is the road. I'm not sure if the car can get through this. So I just fell into the mud. Look at me. F***ing clumsy mother f***. Ah, oh, Cameroon. Oh, the car's already there. Perfect. From all the journeys we took, this one has to be the coziest. The driver had a beer, a whiskey, and he also undressed himself, so he's half naked right now. Probably half drunk as well. I think this is going to be less pleasant than we expected. We also spotted that the driver is barefoot. He has no shoes. And I think uh, if he could, he would be completely naked here with, with his huge uh, uh, charisma. Yes, uh, another fun information from our fun journey. Let's carry on. Using this huge camera is not working at this moment, it's very uncomfortable, so as many times before I'm gonna use the phone. It's been four hours on the road, we're still not halfway done here. They told us it would take four hours, so I suppose it would still be like six more hours, so we're definitely gonna arrive at dark. The road is just horrible. One of the Probably, probably the worst road I've ever taken because it, it's so long, it's so bumpy, everything's unpaved. So we're having a little break after five hours. Five hours, remember? It should have taken four hours, but five hours and still not there. We're in the biggest city that's on the way. It's called Bifindi. It has around 15,000... Bipindi. Bipindi, sorry. Uh, it has around 15,000 inhabitants. There's nothing much in here. We're definitely gonna arrive at dark, which I don't like. We definitely won't have time to do anything related to the frog, so we need to do everything tomorrow. This is Africa. When they say something related to the time, you always need to multiply it by two. Or three. Or three. So, um, we're, uh, it's, it's already dark. It's still 40 kilometers till Lolodorf. We're uh, in a small village. Some passengers are getting off the car and uh, I just want, wanted to say one information. Um, the driver just uh, had another two shots of some alcohol so he's already had three shots and two beers. Our faith is in this guy's hands. He's definitely drunk. He, he hasn't eaten for like eight hours. Cameroon. He just keeps burping. Yeah, he just keeps burping. He's fucking half naked. Yeah, he's half na naked, burping, and uh, drunk. Perfect. 
and barefoot. Great news, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of people are getting off uh, this vehicle. We started uh, talking with, with the remaining people and most of them know hunters that hunt the biggest frog in the world and they will put us in touch with them. So, great news. I'll keep you updated. Well, wow, this is this is everything I was hoping for. The journey took about 10 hours, but that doesn't matter because tomorrow we are going to hunt the biggest frog in the world. By the way, we counted like four different species of insects in this room, but that doesn't matter. Because tomorrow's a big day and we need to get some sleep. Good night. Lolodorf, a small town of 15,000 people in which electricity doesn't work for half of the year, therefore the inhabitants drink warm beer here the most inaccessible place I've ever been to. There are almost no restaurants or hotels here. The gateway to the world's largest frog. So there's three of us going to hunt the frog. Me, Teresa and the hunter. And we need two things. Um, we need two torches, two head torches. I brought one for myself, so we need to buy one for the hunter and one for Teresa. And we also need uh, rubber boots, because we're gonna go into the water and we need the rubber boots for me, for Teresa and for the hunter. Let the shopping begin. So we have the Wellington boots. Um, I also found the perfect slippers here in Lolodorf. Can I try the torch? It's very very light, I'm not surprised it costs like 90 cents, but it works, look. Yeah, it works. I got new boots! <laughs> Merci beaucoup! They have only one boot of the size 40. They don't have a pair, so we need to look in another place. So the situation is like this. We have both head torches. We have the Wellington boots for me. We're still looking for the Wellington boots for the for Teresa. Um, we're looking for a number 40, which is the smallest size we can get here. Uh, we found just one number 40 in, in another shop. Not a pair, just but one. Is 36. Yeah. Her feet are just 36, but 40 is the smallest size. And we're also looking for the boots for the for the hunter. He told us his size was small 40, 40 petite, but nobody knows what is small 40, even the local drunks. Nobody knows. So we're gonna get him 41. If we find one. We found 40 ones. They're gonna be fine for him. So Teresa will buy 40 ones because we haven't found 40s. What can we do? We have all the gear for tonight's hunt. Voilà, François, tes bottes et la torche. C'est bon? Ah, c'est bon. Ok, ok. Tu peux essayer les bottes si ils sont bons. C'est bon? C'est bon, c'est bon. On va préparer 5 minutes. 5 ouais. minutes. Okay. Uh, we're not alcoholics, but we had dinner and we were eating it with hands because they don't have forks and knives and stuff like this. That's why we need to burn the bacteria if there's some. So, so cheers. cheers. 
We don't wanna we don't wanna get diarrhea in the water. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Slivovica, mm. the national alcohol of Slovakia. Ugh. Ready to go. Phone again, because I'm not going to the water with this camera. This phone should be waterproof. Let's go and catch the biggest frog in the world. <laughs> Oui, on va. Merci. Four of us are going to be on this motorbike. This is definitely the most bizarre thing I've ever done. We had to get off the bike because there was a huge hole in front of us, but we're back. After an hour, we arrived to a tiny camp in the heart of the rainforest, somewhere between Lolodorf and Bipindi. Midnight came. So we arrived at François' house and uh, our faith is in his hands right now. We are in the middle of the Cameroonian rainforest with the frog hunter. That's probably the strangest thing I've ever said. There's just total darkness and so many, so many sounds of the nature. We are, we've never been so vulnerable. I think if, if anyone tried to kill us right now, they could do it easily because we're like 35 kilometers from the nearest civilization. You hear that? That may be the frog. Wow. So uh, we are being accompanied by François' brother, whose name is Maggio, and we're gonna find the frog with him. We were just told that I shouldn't be filming in the river because too much light may scare the frog and the frog may just flee away. That's why I have no idea how I'm gonna film the process, but it's going to be interesting. I I'll find a way. I'll find a way. The frog is caught by this net that's thrown at it. So let's hope we're gonna find one. I think that at this moment I can without any doubt say that this is the craziest thing I've ever done. The hunter just saw a little frog, a little Goliath frog. The hunter just caught a little Goliath frog. We have a little Goliath frog. Okay. That's a little baby. Mm -hmm. So this is a baby mm -hmm. of the Goliath frog. Wow. Hey man. So he caught a bigger one but still a baby. The hunter also said that he saw a giant frog, but it fled. They, they can jump like seven or 10 meters away from you. So it just fled. Right now we're heading uh, to a hill where big frogs should live. So let's go. So this time it's only me going to hunt the frog with the hunter. Let's see how this goes. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So I just fell in the water. Never mind. We oui, will oui, oui. Wee oui, wee oui, wee! Oui. Oh, we almost had it. We almost had it. 
I'm completely wet. My shoes are filled with water and we don't have the frog. We're gonna keep trying. C'est très très difficile avec cette chaussure. Ah. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's impossible to film, walk and catch the frog at the same time. We saw two of them and uh, once he approached them to throw the net at them, they just fled away. Oh, we're so unlucky. So the hunter left us without me right now because of these shoes. I would be just slowing him down. We're gonna wait for him and we're gonna hope that he will come back with the biggest frog in the world. Ooh. Ooh. So we have the first big frog of today. Wow, look at this. Look at this. We, we haven't found a very big one, but we found a small one from the biggest species in the entire world. Look at this, look at those legs. Incredible. I think the hunt was pretty successful. I hope we can let him go because these, uh, these frogs are in danger. They are very rare, although we found like six of them. But on the other hand, um, these people live a very primitive life and uh, this is often their only source of food. So let's see if we can if we can negotiate because I really won't let this one go. Goliath frog, the biggest frog in the world. On vous paye de l'argent, vous pouvez acheter quelque chose d'autre. Les petites, c'est impossible de laisser les petites. Oui. On va payer pour ça. On va, on va payer pour laisser la, <laughs> les grenouilles. The last thing we had to do was to go back to Françoise's hut, pay for his time and the release of the small frogs, and then head back to our hotel. So our ride back home is here. It's 3 a.m. We waited like an hour for the bike, but it's finally here, so we can get home with incredible memories. Let's go, cause. I'm gonna pass out, I'm, I'm so tired. Merci. Bonsoir. Bonne nuit. By the way, we didn't come at the right time. The biggest frogs can be found in November and December. It's July right now. So, uh, maybe next time. We're going back to the civilized world right now. Way too many insects and cockroaches for us here. Yeah. Go get frog.